Hello, everybody. Welcome into the Apples and Genos Fantasy Hockey Podcast, the most perspicacious fantasy hockey podcast on the planet. My name is Nate Groot Niblink. I'm the creator of Apples and Genos, originator of the Zero G Draft Strategy. And in this podcast, Blake and I are going to have some fun making some bold predictions for the 2024 25 season. Let's get it. And of course, I have your friend and my best friend, where things are not always as they seem. It's Blake Creamer. Blake, how are you feeling tonight? Oh, uh, you know what? You're getting a, a real rhythm on this. It's it's Blake <laughs> Creamer. I I, you know, I like that. That's music to my ears, man. And what the hell was that right off the top? Perspicacious. I mean, what you know? I, I've I've we've talked about this in the Discord, but Nate is literally a human thesaurus. I don't know what goes on in that brain of yours, but it, it must be terrifying, Nate. I don't know what's happening. It is terrifying, but probably for different reasons than most people are thinking. Um, I think we should just go straight into some content here, Blake. This is kind of a fun one. We do this pretty much every year. We try to throw some bold predictions, some hot takes out there. Uh, we've hit on a few here and there, but by and large, we're trying to take some big swings here. We're trying to, we're trying to manifest some things for our fantasy seasons this year. We're trying to think of things that have a chance of happening, but are obviously a little bit more on the wild side and try to put those in front of the people, try to make the people think about some real ceiling outcomes for some people and potentially some, uh, some more uh, floor outcomes as well. Blake, why don't you just go ahead and take us right in with number one? You bet, buddy. Whenever Nate gets right to content, I, I basically take it as a diss, like he doesn't want to talk to me. <laughs> so, so that's very hurtful right off the top, but that's fine. Um, yeah, I love hot takes, by the way, because they're silly, but then if you somehow hit, then you can look back and be like, see, I yeah. called it, right? And everyone's like, whoa. And they're like, yeah, you need to be listening <laughs> to this podcast. All right. This is, uh, if none of these hit, this, this pod's being taken off the feed. Anyway, <laughs> uh, my first hot take uh, is an interesting one. Yeah, I've got Miro Heiskin and winning the first Norris trophy, his first Norris trophy with close to 70 points and an obscene amount of time on ice. And to top that off, the Stars win the President's Trophy. Um, so, you know, uh, I'll give you a little bit of a, a thought there. Like, I, I think I've the last three years I've thought Heiskanen is kind of a dark horse for the Norris. But when you got Kale McCarr out there, like, and, and Quinn Hughes taking it last year, like, I don't see that happening again. He's kind of had his fun. I think it's probably McCarr season, but I don't know. I, from what I've seen of Miro Heiskanen, first off, like, this guy's just an absolute beauty. Um, uh, I think like one big thing I noticed with Miro Heiskanen last year is the power play points fell off. And that's really, mm -hmm. I, I think that's kind of where some of it's going to come back. And it was weird. Like he still had a decent season, like 54 points in 71 games, but it, you know, his power play points fell from 34 in 2022, 23 to 21. I mean, what the hell? And I dug in a little bit on his power play stuff and um, it, it seemed to me like it was just a little bit of bad luck. Like his, his IPP dropped pretty significantly. So you know, maybe they were changing the look, but it was still the same unit, right? It was Pavelski, it was Ben, it was Robertson, it was Heiskanen, and then uh, uh, who's who am I missing? Uh, Hints. So, yeah, yeah it, I think it was just a little bit of bad luck there, and also the emergence of the second power play, you know, putting up some good minutes. And yeah, that's sort of the way it went. But I really think that um, they're going to go with full power play one here, especially if, you know, they got Wyatt Johnston on there. I don't see how they're going to split the power plays the way that they did last year. Although Heiskanen did get a 70% power play share, so I'm, I'm not making it uh, sound like he got it enough time. But I think that uh, those power play points come back. And not to mention, this guy is a freaking unit on the ice. He's a horse. He's a stallion. Um, he's one of the best in the league in terms of um, just chance and uh, offense contribution on his team. And I think that that with his defensive acumen is really going to, I think he's going to ball out this year. This guy's 25. He's good to go. He plays a ton of minutes. And I think if the stars do win the president's trophy, this guy's going to be at the top of the heap. All right. There you have it. I give this one, like if I have to put this out of 10, uh, I will give this one a solid six out of 10 on the spiciness scale. Uh, yes. 
Definitely, like, I think it's possible, right? I think that Heiskanen has this kind of season in him. It probably does take that kind of time on ice. He probably has to have a really efficient season in terms of the IPP, in terms of the shooting, in terms of the power play time on ice that he gets. Um, we, we've talked about it before, but the Stars did really kind of do a 1A, 1B situation, like really limited the minutes of their top players on the power play. And so he's probably got to win out there in terms of the power play time on ice. Obviously, you'd have to stay healthy as well. So obviously, there's a, a few kind of things that have to hit for him to get to here. But I do think that it's within the range of outcomes for this player. I wonder if like 70 points is even enough to win the Norris these days, though, with the way that the, the league is trending, all these guys getting point per game or better. So that'll be the interesting part. But I do think that the NHL in general really does hold this player in high regard. So that part I can get behind. And the Stars winning the President's Trophy, yeah, they might be my pick. I I uh, put a little money down on them to win the Cup this year. So I'm definitely oh, on board I didn't with know that. that. That's nice. All right, we're together on this. Synergy. That's right. Well, we'll see if we continue the synergy as I give you my first bold prediction. This one is Jacob Chikrin unseats John Carlson on top power play by New Year's and is a top five defenseman for fantasy for the rest of the season. Uh, the more I've thought about this, like when I did my original projections, it came out really low on Jacob Chikrin and I was really disheartened, uh, basically just thinking about Washington and how bad that offensive situation was last yep. year. Um, I'm baking in now as I've thought about it more and as uh, I've talked to some other people, yourself included, I'm kind of baked in a little bit more upside for this Washington team this year, second year under the coach uh, there. And obviously they've made some additions this year that should help out. Can't be worse, honestly, than last year in terms of the offensive production. And so I've baked in a little bit more of that. I've also just uh, kind of come to the conclusion that I never want to be out on the talent of a guy. And for all the things that we hold dear in fantasy hockey, Jacob Chikrin absolutely does those things in spades. And so uh, that's why I wanted to bring this up. That's why I wanted to put my foot down and say Jacob Chikrin can absolutely be a top five defenseman for fantasy hockey. He's pr he's going to have to do this, right? Like he's going to have to unseat John Carlson. And given the organizational uh, love for John Carlson that there and the fans love for John Carlson there and for good reason that's probably a bit of a hot take that he could do that but I think top pair kind of minutes is locked in for Jacob Chikrin so really I think it is real only the top power play that he really needs and obviously the power play would have to be uh, kind of decent this year uh, so there's a few things that he needs to hit in order to get here but that's going to be the case for all of these and I do think that this is a player who has that kind of upside inside of him Oh man, this is one of those takes where it's like, I want it to be true, but I'm not sure that that's going to be, you know, come to fruition. I mean, if I had to rate that out of 10, that's probably, that's probably a seven just in terms of okay. the actual, you know, that it will actually happen. But I mean, I'm, I'm huge on chicken as well. I was so pissed, like, you know, it, yeah. <laughs> weirdly pissed. I'm like, please, what, what are you doing? Like now trade Carlson and then we're good. Right. Like <laughs> this is a guy that has 20 goals in him for sure. Like he, he had a season in Arizona, 18 goals in 56 games. He does that. He had 14 goals with Ottawa last year. They were a freaking train wreck all year. I mean, he, he had like a 46% power play share. He still got seven goals, 16 power play points. This guy's awesome. Like he just needs the deployment on the power play. That's really what's been missing for Jacob Chikrin. So um, is he going to do it though? I mean, Carlson is getting older, like, but I don't, I don't, I, I still feel like he's got a, a couple years in him here. And like you said, I, I think they're, that's kind of their go-to guy there, but you know, he is older. Maybe that means more injuries, something like that. I mean, Chikrin is a great option as an insurance for John Carlson. And I think he will spend some time on power play one this year, but yeah, 40, 40 to 45 points is probably where we have him. Is that what you projected him for? I don't remember. Yeah, just over 40 points is my oh, baseline stinks. projection. How many goals? <laughs> Uh, that I don't know off the top of my head, but it was definitely double digits. Oh, uh, always is with this guy. I hate this. All right. He's a beautiful man, beautiful jawline as well on this man, and a massive Adam's apple. I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> All right. Well, after our admiration for Jacob Chikrin, Blake, you got to bring us in with bold prediction number two. You bet your sweet bippy, buddy. Um, this one is not going to be a surprise to people, but I got to put it out there. I got to put it out there with the bold prediction. Alex Ovechkin pots 30 goals this year, but struggles to get 60 points and the Caps fail to make the playoffs. 
Um, yeah, and I, I'm, I'm not going to go super deep on Ovechkin here. I've, I've talked about him enough in the offseason, but I mean, long story short, this guy is it's just age related decline, right? Like, um, I think he hasn't adapted his game enough defensively to warrant a ton of ice time. Like, I think uh, I was looking at his five on five numbers last year. Like he only had 29 points at five on five last year. That stinks. Right. So he's not getting anything done. All his production is is power play time. Right. It's that, you know, 93 percent power play share that he has. And that's going to happen again this year. So that's that's the floor for Ovechkin is super solid because he has like over four minutes on the power play. It's crazy yeah. stuff. But I think the five on five is falling off a cliff. Um, you know, and I do think the team got a lot better and they have more options. They don't have to just throw Ovechkin out there at five on five. They can pick and choose. They got PLD. Oh, buddy. We <laughs> didn't talk about that with Jacob Chikram. But, you know, when you got PLD, yeah, the team just got better. Um, God, it, I just want to put this out there. I am not a PLD booster. All right. I am a PLD no. truther that he will get to 60 points. But 60 points, I mean, you know. That's, I, I mean, I could get 60 points. You could too, right, Nate? I mean, if we were in the NHL, that's that's reasonable, isn't it? Uh, I think anyone who watched me play beer league hockey last night would be able to confirm in a heartbeat that there's zero chance that I could get to 60 oh, points. Damn. That's that's just being modest. All right, we, I've seen the video. I mean, this guy goes barred down on the regular and it feels good. <laughs> um, but yeah, just last thing on Ovechkin too, like uh, the shots on goal and the scoring chances, the things we look at here, they went way down, right? Shots and goal for 60 to 5 on 5 went from 10.37, which we love, to 7.93. That show ain't no good. Uh, his individual scoring chances, 11.3 to 8.75. Shooting percentage went down. It's trending in the wrong direction, and I don't think that it's coming back this season. I think his ice time is going to go down. I'm sorry, Ovi. Uh, you're going to have to wait one more year for that record. All right. Yeah, I give this one, I honestly don't think this one is too hot because there's definitely a scenario in which it is just pure age-related decline that we saw last year, and it does uh, come to home to roost in another in a new low this season, I guess. So I definitely don't think this is the hottest take that you've got oh, for God. us here tonight. I'll probably give this one, I'll give this one a 4 out of 10, uh, personally. Okay. Uh, that being said, like I, I definitely have a healthier projection on Ovechkin. I think the team wants him to get the record, and I think they realize that, like, across the lineup, they have like, I would say they have more reasonable players. Like PLD is definitely an upgrade over what they had before. Andrew Mangiapane comes in, and he's already an upgrade over what they had before. Tom Wilson was out for a long period of last season. He's back this season. So I think that the overall environment has improved and that should boost Ovechkin somewhat uh, because I do think he's at the stage of his career where he definitely like can't do it himself the way he used to be able to do. Um, but that being said, I do have him bouncing back just a little bit this year unless, you know, that age-related decline continues for him. I do think we'll see a little bit of a bounce back this year. I have him just under 70 points, 69.6 is what I got him for, which is pretty nice i would say uh overall i think i'm a little bit higher on ovechkin am i drafting him with confidence anywhere not really um but yeah i think that we could see uh, a few different versions of ovechkin come through this year i just i just can't be uh, i can't be doubting the man uh, after all that he's shown us throughout his career i just don't want to go down <laughs> on the oh. on the wrong side of oh it, so. no you're, you're I gotta, blind, you got your blinders on nate what are you doing a little bit you love this yeah. silver fox. Um, <laughs> one thing I wanted to say about Ovechkin really quick. Uh, when I was yeah. talking with Matt Larkin in our in my ADP battle, he was talking about um, some of the Washington players and and the brass there. They this record is really important to that team, yeah. which is which is an interesting piece because in my mind, like before I talked to him, I'm like, well, they want to win, right? And if they want to win, I think they need to play Ovechkin less at five on five. Like that's that's just my opinion. But uh, he kind of countered that. He's like they. They, the record is more important than the winning to them. And I thought, I just thought that was an interesting piece. I don't know how, you know, true that is come season, you know, once the season yeah. starts, but that was sort of his sentiment. And I, I just thought that was an interesting piece. For sure. All right, Blake, we're going to move over. I'm going to give you my second bold prediction. Matt Boldy scores 40 goals, 90 points, goes in the second round of 2025-26 fantasy hockey drafts. I mean, anybody who's listened to this channel at any point in the last, I don't know, three months definitely knows that uh, over here at Apples and Geos, we do love ourselves some Matt Boldy. 
shows out in every metric that I like to look at, uh, dominates at five on five, no matter who he's with, uh, even when he's playing on a second line uh, with <laughs> sometimes a whole lot of nobodies, including Marcus Johansson, who Blake still loves. Oh, geez. Uh, How do you bring that up? <laughs> but I think Matt Boldy is just one of these guys that he will absolutely pop at sometime soon. I haven't projected for 83 points. I think this year... At some point, he's going to end up back on that Cap Caprizov line. That's what I was told. I, I keep going back and yeah, forth between not Caprizov and Caprizov, yeah. uh, but I've been told it's Caprizov, and so I'm going to try to go with that. But anyway, I think Boldy, obviously, is going to be on the top power play with Caprizov and those guys, but um, I think he gets there at even strength at some point as well, and I think those two together is just absolute dynamite. They're going to dominate the puck. Nobody else is going to have the puck on the ice when these two guys are together. I think that we're looking at a guy who could be a superstar in the league as soon as this year. And I'm going to plant my flag here. Matt Boldy scores, scores 40 goals, 90 points. Oof. I love it. I mean, it's only seven points off my projection as well. So I think it's pretty damn reasonable. These takes that we're, that we're doing, they, these are reasonable. Why are they so damn reasonable? <laughs> I got a couple in here that are going to be pretty spicy. All right. They're, they're going to they're they're gonna coming. upset your stomach. All right. And then it's ring sting. All right. And that's terrible. <laughs> that's not good for anybody. Oh God. Um, but anyways, this take here, I'm so on board with, like, again, one that I, um, like I have him for 83 points. What's seven more points? Like what needs to happen for Boldy to get seven more points? I think, um, he needs to shoot a little bit more, right? His shots, yeah. uh, especially at five on five, like they've kind of decreased, um, they decreased over what he had last year. I think those come back, right? I don't see why they wouldn't. This guy is, is a young player developing. Um, and if he's away from cap too, like, I think there's some potential away from cap as well. Like I remember this with Steven Stamkos when I was digging in on him, uh, like two years ago, um, his IPP was sky high when he was on the second line with Sorelli and Kalorn or whatever the hell he, who he was playing with there in Tampa. Mm -hmm. And that was his best season in like the last five. And then he went up to the top line with Kucherov and point, and he only put together like an 83 point season or 84 or something. So I think there's something to that to some degree. I know it's not the same player, but obviously access to cap is going to equal good things, but I think yeah. he can do it without cap as well. Like if it's him, Jeek and whoever, you know, uh, you know, legend journeyman, Marcus Johansson. Um, <laughs> I just love the player, but yeah, I think he needs to shoot a little bit more. If the efficiency stays, that's okay. I mean, you know, on a shooting percentage, maybe a little higher and some power play points, right? Like his highest power play point season, uh, 25, 26, two years ago, I think Boldy can be a 30 power play point guy. This, this power play in Minnesota is ridiculous. Cap looks dialed as well. Yeah. Like in the preseason here, what the hell? Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about this player and I think it's a really cool take. Yeah. That, Kaprizov, I don't know if you saw the specific one I'm thinking of, but he had like a one-timer power play goal, but it was like from above the circle on the boards. I was like, how do you even get the puck there from that spot? No, he's and he just player. absolutely blasted it. Yeah, uh, Minnesota's so yeah, going to be fun this year. It's going to be pretty fun to watch that power play work this year for sure. Yep. All right, let's keep rolling. Blake, prediction number three. Oh, yeah, this is the one that matters, folks. We got the lollipop, Martin Popsicle. I mean, Pospisil. Ah, oh, jeez. Um, <laughs> I'm talking Martin Pospisil of the Calgary Flames. He's going to have an epic season going nuclear as the Flames 2C uh, with 25 goals, 25 assists, 175 shots on goal, over 100 pims, and 300-plus hits. For the ultra beefer, Martin Pospisil, legend in the game. This guy's, you know, this guy could be Boone Jenner's son. Boone Jenner and Vincent Trocek <laughs> had a son, and it wasn't me, unfortunately. It was Martin Pospisil. And also, this guy's mean as hell. He's a, he's an absolute dingus, and I'm here for it. So, um, yeah, I'll just give you my quick take on Pospisil. It's a player I'm interested in for sure. But, yeah, we got word. If he's going to be good for season opener, sounds like to me. And they're going to give him the 2C, which he didn't play last year. He played on the wing last year, I think right wing. Um, you know, he spent most of his time with, uh, Kadri. Um, he was playing with Kadri and Kuzmenko towards the end there, which was a really nice line, but I mean, mm -hmm. you know, his production nine points in 18 games when that was his line, not terrible. Right. And, and his time on ice at when he was like uh, the last 18 games of the year was 14 minutes. So that's not great. I'm, I'm expecting he's going to get 
to get these kind of numbers, he's going to have to get like probably 16 minutes or 17 minutes maybe. And I think that's reasonable as a 2C there. But this guy just brings so much to the table. It's ridiculous. Um, in terms of offensive contribution for this team, like, you know, Corey Schneider, all three zones, this guy shows out, all right? Um, he's 94th percentile in scoring chance assists and 91st percentile in rush shot assists. He does that. This is a great rush player, folks. He's a big zone entry guy, as, as I love to talk about. Um, not to mention he's a beast on the four check. Like, he's an amazing four checker. Um, and I think, too, like, he's if he's attached to Jonathan Huberto, like, this guy so far in his career, not a very efficient shooter, but... I think, you know, if he's playing with Huberto, like say what you will about the man, his uh, offense has fallen way off, but I still believe that Huberto is one of the best passers in the league. I don't think he's being utilized proper, properly in Calgary, and I think there's some other issues too, maybe just with the player himself. I, you know, when you have two seasons of 55 points or whatever it is, like it's not just your deployment and the coaching. You know, there's there's some other issues there, right? But uh, I think that's a really nice match for him, and it's just a player I'm excited about. This guy's going to get opportunity, and he showed out at the World Hockey Championships as well. Seven points in seven games for the Popsicle until he was injured. So... Um, I'm excited about this guy. I've drafted him in both my beefer leagues, my banger leagues. I got the, I got Pospisil. I drafted him around 160 and that feels weird, but then you <laughs> dig in and you're like, yeah, uh, like, like all these, uh, all three zone stats aside, like over 300 hits, please like over hundred penalty minutes, like guaranteed this guy's an absolute ding dong. So, um, I'm excited about the player. I don't know. Give me, give me your take on Martin Pospisil. Is this, is this guy on your radar at, in any capacity, Nate? Uh, pretty much no. Like I get it in Pim's leagues, Pim's uh, bangers, cats leagues for sure. Uh, but I, first off, like we'll just address. Like I don't think he's the two C for any length of time as long as Kadri and Backlund are healthy. Backlund's the captain of this team, and Kadri's their best player. So uh, I'm oh, struggling no. to see him really take that role. And like you would have to absolutely dominate for him to do that, at least minutes wise, right? Like well, if like you're. Backlund? Oh no, Backlund's a career third liner. This guy's his stats are in the toilet. A career third liner who consistently gets minutes and is the captain of the team. So that's the problem that I have just in terms of yeah, the minutes as a center on this team. So there's that. Then there's the fact that like he hasn't really ever shown out in terms of actual counting stats at any point. Like even as a as an up and coming player, if you go to hockey prospecting, look up his profile, you're getting comparisons to Marty Reasoner, and that's the only name I even recognize on the list. Uh, so that part I don't love. Then yeah, obviously last year first season, so take it with a grain of salt, but only twelve forty three ice time. He would have to take yeah like a probably a four minute per game leap this year, and. I'm I'm struggling to see where that comes from. I like the underlying stats look solid. It's a good first season in the league for sure. Obviously he's going to hit the shots should be decent, uh, but 25, 25 would be absolute ceiling scenario in my mind for Martin Pospisil. I think this one's pretty spicy. I'm going to give this one a nine out of 10. Oh my, you know what? I feel good about that. That's, that's <laughs> a high score and that's what we're here for folks. <laughs> All right. Well, before we get into the last five of our bold predictions here, I'm going to take a quick second to talk about the Apples and Genos Patreon. Two bucks a month gets you the supporter tier. If you just want to show some support for the podcast, we'd appreciate that. But also, it gets you access to patron-only live shows once a month. The Apples tier at $8 a month gets you access to those patron-only live shows. Also gets you access to patron-only Discord channels uh, where you can talk with other patron members and where I'm much more likely to see any questions or any thoughts you might be putting out there and uh, engage in some discussion with you there also gets you access to my show notes this obviously includes the weekly waiver wire targets uh, in written format so you can refer to those as you're um, building out your plan for your waiver ads throughout the week also get access to exclusive apples and genos player evaluation tools this is how i make my decisions on who to pick up um, throughout the throughout the season it's uh, what i use in puzzling players when i'm evaluating the players that all the good people of the Apples and Geos Discord put forward for me to talk about in that live show. So uh, definitely, I think that's a tier that a lot of people are interested in to get some good value for their money. If you're true degenerate, you get to the Genos tier for 15 bucks a month. You get all those perks, plus you get every single question answered, guaranteed by myself. Blake, are you ready for the last five? I'm stoked, buddy. Um, yeah, do you accept bits of string as payment? 
Uh, bits of string in quantity, yes. So okay. that's um, good to know. You can. Yeah, I measure options, it. Right? Yeah, yeah, I measure it by the yard, and uh, yeah, we have a guy for that. Oh my god, I'm sorry, I derailed everything, Nate. I'm <laughs> I'm very sick right now. I'm I don't know what's going on. I'm on cold medication. That's that's <laughs> that's to blame here. All right, let's get into my third bold prediction. This is that Logan Cooley and Dylan Genther are both point-per-game players over the back half of the season, and the Utah Hockey Club make the playoffs in their inaugural season. We've talked a bit about the Utah Hockey Club, and I've definitely voiced some interest in what they might be able to do this season. I think Genther looks really good already in the preseason I was hoping to see Cooley on the top power play uh, right away just to start out the season, give him maybe some rocket fuel to get kick-started this year. It looks like Barrett Hayton's going to take that job, and I have some interest in Barrett Hayton too for the time being, don't get me wrong. But I think that everyone in this organization knows that Logan Cooley is the future 1C of this team, the guy who's going to lead this offense alongside Clayton Keller and Dylan Genther. And so I have some confidence that this is the season that Logan Cooley, maybe it takes him a little while but i think he takes over that kind of um, minute munching role probably barrett hayton will be there to take some of the tough minutes he's a good two-way player but logan cooley will be the guy who's on the ice in the last minute when utah is trying to score and i think that he's going to do that more often than not i really do think that both of these players have sky high potential and i think they both hit it in the back half of this season i love it um i'm just looking at utah's lineup right now I'm excited about this. Damn, like their first, their top six. I'm like, yes, I want pretty much a piece of every one of those players. And you know what the uh, the unsung hero is on their line there? Jack McBain. <laughs> McBain, let's get silly, Elon. Let's do it. Oh yeah. Um, actually, I love McBain. He was getting some love on the PDO cast as well uh, with Dmitry Filipovich. They were talking about Jack McBain. I love that because they were talking about Cooley and Genther. Um, but yeah, it, it's. I think it's a no-brainer. These guys are the future. Genther is the now. Like, he's yeah. good to go now. This guy could pop for 70 this year. Um, he looks great in the preseason. I mean, it's so hard to watch these games and not try and extrapolate what you think. Yeah. Gonna, like, <laughs> like, four goals in the preseason? Genther's getting 50 this year. It's like, yeah, yeah he's going to go out and dink around and get, like, 21 or something. It's like, oh, man, what happened here? Um, but, yeah, I, I'm pretty damn excited about this team like we haven't even really seen Clayton Keller go off or Schmaltz like I mean he's I think he's Schmaltz injured I don't even know but yeah it's it's just an exciting team and I, I especially love Genther and then yeah Cooley his first year in the league like pretty nice little season right played all 82 yep. nice like you know ups and downs in the season was prioritized at times and not at other times but um I think it, it like he had 15 points in the last 20 games that's pretty damn nice Yep. I'm excited. I'm very excited about these guys here. This take, uh, I, I think it probably can hit. So I don't know. I'm going to give us a three. Hey, this, this is, this, this is lukewarm, my man. I think okay. that, uh, yes. I mean, maybe you said the full season point per game. Okay. But you know, back half, that's what they already did pretty much last year. Nate, what are you doing? All right. I thought, you know, having Utah making the playoffs too, that's not okay. A, all right. You know what? Favorite, okay. If Utah so. makes the playoffs, all right, let's bump it up to four. Let's, let's bump right. it up to four, but you know, Thanks I'll, for the I'll love me. I love me the Utah HC. All right. Worst name in sports. What the <laughs> hell are we doing here? Awesome. Awesome uh, fit though. On these guys. Love that Jersey. Yeah. All right, Blake, give us bold prediction. Number four. All right, buddy. Um, just a player. I've, I've sort of been watching uh, just a little bit here in the preseason. Maxim Siplikov, that common household name on the New York Islanders. I am predicting that he's going to become fantasy relevant this season, surprising us with 65 points to go with 70 plus hits all while skating on the top line with Matty Barzell. Uh, no, not top line. Oh, I put top line. I meant second line. Uh, so <laughs> it's Brock Nelson and Kyle Palmieri and power play one. So okay. that's, uh, yeah, um, that's, that's an interesting take. Like I, I've, I've watched just highlights of this player. I haven't even seen a full game of Maxim Siplikov. So I don't have the best take on him, but from what I've seen and what I've read about, like, um, first off, Patrick Waugh is like really complimentary of this player. Like they, they had a plan for him. They started him out on the fourth line and, and he kind of worked his way up and, and really earned his minutes on the second line there with Brock Nelson and Kyle Palmieri. And now he's earned his minutes on the top power play there in, on Long Island. And they actually look pretty damn good. Like I, 
I guess because I hate Bo Horvat so much, I forgot how good he is on the power play. Like he's actually pretty damn good on the power play in that bumper position. Yeah. Um, he's really good at sniping from there. And I, you know, I saw some highlights of them doing that, but even Matty Barzal was saying about Sipakov, like they like his net front game and they like uh, how he plays behind the net. Like they're, they're already talking about it. Um, they have chemistry there. They had a big game against the Rangers there in, in preseason. I think they pumped them like five, two, this guy got a goal and assist. Barzal had like four points or something like that. They're, they're going buck wild. So, um, I don't know to me, like, and then on top of that, sorry, this guy's like six, three, two, ten. Like he can skate. He's got, he's got everything that I think you need to, to perform here in the NHL. And last, like last year, this guy was in the KHL. And he's played the KHL for like five or six years or something. But last year he had 31 goals in the KHL, which to me is that's not easy to do, right? Like that, that's a very comparable league there, the KHL. And I, I find that it's usually transferable to some degree to the NHL. And, uh, you know, the, the only thing with Maxim Sipakov is like before that big season he had last year in the KHL, he wasn't doing anything. Like he was putting up like, you know, Martin Pospisil numbers here uh, from this season, you know what I mean? Like 17 points in 60 games or something, which is, you know, nothing to write home about. So it's still a player that's kind of finding himself, I think. Yeah. But I think he has found himself in a situation in New York where he's going to get some opportunity and he's already running with it. And he's a bit of a beefer as well. So I think there's going to be some fantasy relevance here. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if we were rostering this guy or having this guy on our roster at times throughout the year, maybe a streamer with benefits situation, like a guy you end up holding at certain points. Yeah, I think this one's pretty spicy. Uh, I don't think there's much of a chance for him to get to 65 in my opinion like you mentioned he scored 31 goals last year in 65 games that was also with 47 total points he had 16 assists that was also with an 18.7 percent shooting percentage the seasons before that 7.1 7.0 10.8 6.2 so i do kind of feel pretty worried that there was just like this one outlier season in terms of the shooting percentage that really got him here that being said like if he is on a top power play uh obviously there's going to be some opportunity that comes with that if he can establish a role there there's definitely going to be something to do there but 65 points feels really tough to get to unless he really does start to drive the play on his own and actually do stuff for brock nelson and kyle palmieri on that line and not just be a passenger on that line and kind of cleaning up the garbage kind of player which kind of kyle palmieri already does to some extent uh, on the power play and on the on that line uh, in years past so either way i think this one is probably the spiciest one you've got i think this is a 10 out of 10 on the spiciness oh the spice meter um but i do think that there's interest here i do think like we're probably we probably are going to be streaming this player at times throughout the season especially if he's on the power play one right like you got to stream yep. guys um from teams with good schedules on power play one so that makes sense to me but the 65 points i don't think is going to happen so that's what makes it spicy for me oh it's extra bold buddy hey <laughs> do you ever watch those like barbecue reality shows on like netflix or something like that you know what i'm talking <laughs> about like pit masters yeah. or something and every time i don't know why i just thought of this but i bold and then every time I'm like what's your flavor profile today and, and every single person is like all right well today it's going to be sweet with a little bit of heat um, like every single person is like why are you even asking everybody is saying sweet with a little bit of heat so <laughs> I, I don't know i mean I, I don't know where I'm going with this. That's 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 what I'm going to call Maxim Sipakov this year. Sweet with a little bit of heat. All right. That's All his right. flavor profile. All right. Book it. There you have it. All right. My bold prediction number four. Macklin Celebrini quickly usurps Matvey Mishkov's preseason hype and registers a 30-goal, 60-point Calder winning campaign. Wait. I think that... Macklin Celebrini has kind of gotten overshadowed this offseason. You have Bedard from the season before, who obviously everybody's still hyped about for good reason. But Celebrini is a true number one overall pick in his own right. We're not talking about some years past where like it was like, oh, I guess this guy is yeah. the number one. But like really, he wouldn't have gone number one in a year where we had a real number one. Uh, I think Celebrini is all that and a bag of chips. And I think that this guy is good to go from day one. He already plays, you know, a 200 foot game. The coach is going to love him in all situations right from day one. 
I think there's a chance that he gets the full treatment, gets the full like 19 minute plus treatment all the way through the season. I think he's good to go. And I think he's a shot producer. I think he's a goal scorer. I think he can do all that right from the start. The coach is going to love him. The players are going to love him. This is the franchise center of the future and of the now in San Jose. Yeah. I, I don't think I can really argue with it. Like, I, I like the take. I agree with it. Um, I think Calder's going to be interesting this year. I think Cutter Gauthier is going to be in there as well. Like, mm-hmm. this guy's this guy looks really good. Um, remember that 12 game, uh, 12 shot game he had in the yeah. <laughs> like, okay, like, calm down, Cutter. What a cool name as well. Uh, Macklin's <laughs> a cool name as well. Jeez, what are, what are these guys doing? Um, but anyways, yeah, Macklin Celebrini, this guy's, I think he's super consistent. Like, yeah, you're absolutely right. He's, he's getting overshadowed. People aren't excited about him. What? Like we just, because we got Bedard and, and Mishkov, like Celebrini's no good. No, I think both you and I projected Celebrini over Mishkov. If correct me if I'm yeah. wrong, like, um, yeah. And I, I feel really good about that. Even with the preseason that Mishkov's had, um, I think that Celebrini is, like you said, he's the better two-way player, which is going to equal more minutes, more trust from the coach. I love William Eklund, who he's playing with right now. Like, that's a guy yeah. I'm interested in. Tyler Toffoli, if he gets to play with him, just another piece, that veteran presence, right? A- everything is set up, I think, for Macklin Celebrini to succeed and have a good year, at least for fantasy in San Jose. Um, and I think San Jose won't be the tire fire they were last year. I mean, they'll yeah. still be bad, but I-, I really do believe what the what the coach said there. Like, they'll be more fun to watch, right? Mm-hmm. I-, I love Jake Wallman on the back end as well. I like what I've seen so far. They got this guy who hasn't even made the team yet, but his name's like Luke Cagnoni or something. Like, he- he's, Cagnoni, yeah, yeah, he's looking pretty darn good on the power play as well. So, I don't know. They got some bits and pieces. It's going to be a fun team to watch, and I'm low-key interested in the San Jose Sharks this year. Where are you drafting Celebrini this year? Or do, where do you think he should have been drafted? Because I guess all our drafts are over. Yeah, I think that he was definitely worth a late round pick. Uh, the problem with Celebrini is that he's center only, right? Like, yeah. that's the part that's hard to get behind. And really, what is the true like upside if he's an absolute smash this year? Like, it's probably still yeah. not like a point yeah. per game yeah. scenario, which is what you're really looking for in that range. And so it's hard to swing on a center only guy who you don't feel like the absolute ceiling is actually all that high. But that being said, I do think Celebrini is worthwhile and will be rostered in your leagues pretty much the entire season once people really start to get a taste of how good this guy is. All right. Bold prediction number five, Blake. Give it to me. Oh, yeah. Give it to me, Neil. Uh, Here we go. Um, Bold prediction number five, the addition of Mitchkov in Philadelphia vaults. They're horrendous power play uh, from 32nd in the league all the way to at least 15th. So middling and Travis connect pops for 20 power play points and the flyers squeak into the playoffs. What do you think about that? Nate? I mean, uh, give me, give me your take on that real quick before I get into my business here. Sure. Um, I think it's probably a little bit of a hot take that they get all the way up to the middle. Like that would be a pretty big leap. You typically don't see teams make that big of a leap season to season. Uh, That being said, like theoretically, they do have some players who should be able to move the puck around, especially obviously adding Mishkov doesn't doesn't hurt your situation in terms of being able to create offense. Um, so I don't mind it, but it is definitely a little bit spicy, which is what we're going for here. 20 power play points for Konechny. Yeah, if the if the power play is any good, then Konechny is definitely the guy who should benefit the most. Flyers making the playoffs, they're going to be in, in tough to make the playoffs. They probably have to make it through beating people in the Metro, which is maybe a little bit more attainable than it has been in years past, but still, it's a, it's a bit of a tough road to hoe for sure. So... All together uh, with kind of these, this like uh, three legged parlay that you've built here with the power play, connect these 20 power play points and the player, Flyers making the playoffs. I think this is a solid six out of 10 on the spiciness meter. I, I think it's definitely unlikely, but I can still see the scenario at least for each one individually and then uh, potentially getting all three together sweet with a moderate level of heat that's that's where we're going <laughs> for here with bold prediction number five but yeah just really quickly i i the flyers punched way above their weight class last year and torts had them really humming like you know it sucked for fantasy torts is a terrible coach for fantasy but unfortunately this ding dong is pretty damn good in real life he he, he got everything he could have out of the flyers in my opinion like they're um yeah, all their metrics were very reasonable um, in terms of their like five on five goal shares. Like, 
uh, their chances for percentage, they were fourth in the league. And then, you know, defensively, they were really good as well. Like their five on five goal shares, they were third best in suppressing rush shots. The Flyers, they did that. I mean, <laughs> what? Um, you know, but unfortunately, no one on the team can put the biscuit in the basket. They got the ultimate chucker in Owen Tippett, who I think is going to be better this year because he is going to be attached to Mitch Kov. Um, I hope, I hope that's kind of the, you know, torts just let them, let them cook, please. <laughs> can you do that? Actually, I saw, this is off a little off topic, but I saw, um, a post about torts talking about Mitch Kov and how he's not going to, he's not going to stamp down the offense. Like he's not going to try and turn this guy into like a checker. He's right. getting them, getting him out there to do offensive crap. Right. Because this guy is an elite talent and you know, whatever, like you, you take the good with the bad and you shore it up with in, in other ways. Right. So anyways, that's a nice piece there for Mitch Kov. gives me a little bit of hope that, you know, they're going to let the, let the leash off and, and let him go. But um, yeah, I just think Mitch Kov on the power play is, is really where the, um, where that's going to come, right? Their power play was horrible. Uh, like, there's no question there. They were rotating quarterbacks on the back end. I think Cam York is going to take that spot this year and hold on to it. Um, that's that, maybe that's a bold prediction as well. But I think Cam York is is going to be the one. Not that he's going to pop off or anything like that. But Mishka being out there, I think you know we've got some finishers here now. Like, it's going to open up things for Konechny, who had nine power play points last year. Nine. <laughs> Okay, so going up to 20, that is kind of a bold take. Like he had nine last year. So um, I, I just, I feel good, weirdly, about the Flyers. If Torch just just calms down a bit for fantasy, like just give it, give me a top six. That's all we're yeah. asking, Torch. Like mess up the top six, that's fine. Like maybe those six players, but keep them together and give us a power play one. I think we're, we're looking at a team that's going to do so much better on the power play. But I, I definitely don't expect them to be 32nd in the league on the power play. That's for sure. All right, my last one here, the last bold prediction of the episode. This is it. This is the year. Nikolai Ehlers finally explodes for 35 goals, 85 oh. points, gets 19-plus yeah. minutes a night. It's happening. <laughs> Book it confirmed. That's right. Nikolai Ehlers finally cashing in all that talent we've been talking about for years, it feels like, at this point. Uh, yeah, I mean, just – kind of reading the tea leaves obviously we get news that it, he's pretty locked in on power play one every time we see the lines it looks like he's on the top power play that's how they're planning to run it this year that's a true top power play they have nobody uh really of note i i like perfetti but i think uh, the organization doesn't necessarily yeah. like perfetti as much as i do and so i think they really do view this as like the best five guys on their team and they're going to run them out there and they're going to run them out there a lot and so i think the power play situation is pretty locked in I think that it's also a situation where, you know, we even saw it last year where Ehlers did get promoted to a top line scenario alongside Shifley uh, when there were injuries uh, up on the top line. So that could also be in the cards at some point throughout the season. But I also think that this means that Ehlers is always on the ice in overtime, in the last minutes of the games when they're trailing and they need a goal. I think there will be some times this year where they need a goal a little bit more than last year. I think it's hard to say that this Winnipeg team is better than last year. And so I think there's just a lot more situations that could unfold this year where Ehlers is needed and his offense is needed. He is the best offensive player on this team and he should be treated as such this year and i'm putting my foot down scott o'neill make it happen make our dreams come true please i'm begging you oh man how epic would that be if boldy goes for 90 and ehlers goes for 85 like i don't even care if i win my leagues at that point right I'm like what, whatever <laughs> thank you very much like that's amazing like you know what we've been saying all along has come to fruition this guy's a unit i love nikolai ehlers um i saw uh, i'm gonna butcher this too, because I can't remember the exact context of the post, but it was something on Twitter where they were talking about Mark Shifley and Kyle Connor together and how mm -hmm. the expected goals against is like insanely high. Like they're terrible defensively. Like yeah. if Scott Arneal is smart, like switch it up a bit, put Ehlers up with Shifley. I mean, like let's just, I think there's a little bit of room for Ehlers to even get some deployment with Shifley or maybe bump up to the top line with Shifley and Connor. I don't know. Like that, I don't know if that's going to equal anything. I really think the power play is where Ehlers is going to cook. Um, but yeah, like it's, 
it's a beautiful thing to watch this man. If you're, if you're into hockey statistics at all and na- analytics, like go to natural stat trick and just click on Nikolai Ehlers and look, look <laughs> at what this man does for his rate stats. It's unbelievable. His IPP is in the seventies, high seventies. Sometimes every year he had a 92% IPP in 45 games in 22, 23. Like he does that. <laughs> this guy's amazing. I'm excited for Ehlers. I'm so here for this take and I hope it happens. All right. That is all that we had. 10 bold predictions, 10 hot takes for you this season. We'll see. Who's more bolder, Nate? Yes, we should ask the people. Leave a comment. Uh, You can do that pretty much anywhere uh, nowadays. So leave us a comment, add us in Discord. Let us know whose hot takes were bolder, whose hot takes you agreed with the most, uh, which ones you're particularly praying for to come true for your fantasy teams. We want to hear all that from the people. While you're listening to this, do click the link in the description. Join the Discord community if you haven't done so already. That's where you can find Blake and I the most. We're always getting to biz in there, talking with the people, trying to get everybody fantasy championships this year. Gonna if you could, like, rate, review, subscribe, comment. All that stuff really does help us out. So we would appreciate anything you can do for us there. If you're getting any value out of this content season is here, folks. We are live. Things are happening. Buffalo is attempting to play hockey. Let's get to it. But that's going to be all that we've got for this episode. Hopefully it brought you some value. Helped you get a little bit better at Fantasy Hockey today. All the advanced stats you heard today came from Natural Statric, which is a terrific free resource. That's true. Many thanks to the band there there for supplying music for the podcast. Be sure to check out their Spotify as well. That's it, folks. Much love. Mm-hmm.